last week uh, I was on Facebook YouTube live and I spoke about the Hajj as I promised last time. We spoke about Hajj uh, and I think uh, a week before that I spoke about the sacred month which is Ashur al -Hurub. If you go to my YouTube channel you will see it there. I have my YouTube channel. Uh, let me see. Uh, no, I can't put it here. But if you go to my YouTube channel, which is Bush2G9, with the same name, Baba Shwaib Correction Officer, you see uh, it's there. Right? Uh -huh. You can watch. I spoke about what was happening at the Hajj. And I spoke about uh, the sacred months prior to that. Uh, and I have some other videos I did. Uh, but on, on, on TikTok, it's been a, a while I came here live. Uh, and thanks to God, today I'm here. Right, and as I keep the promise, usually Thursdays I want to be on live, and you can see I'm online today. So, anyways, your invites are welcome. You are you're welcome to to send a request. I'll bring you up. Uh, I'll allow you to to speak, and uh, let's have a discussion. Uh, the correction officer is here for the sectarians usually. Uh, Christians are also welcome, uh, but especially uh, sectarians, right? And let's let's have this uh, discussion concerning why they think uh, we cannot follow the Quran for guidance, and we have to follow Sahih Bukhari or other books that they have, right? Uh -huh. Because uh, certain things start to be questioned, and one thing I understand is the truth doesn't mind being questioned, but uh, when when somebody actually stops you from questioning them, then it means there's something fishy going on. There's a problem. There's something being hidden away from you, right? So, the truth doesn't mind, mind being questioned. But however, if it is falsehood, falsehood is always scared of being questioned. So, they either get angry because they are being questioned. But just because you can ask questions doesn't mean you should ask stupid questions. Right, uh, I will encourage, yeah, Salam, uh, JK. So just because you can ask questions doesn't mean you should ask stupid questions. And that, that's one thing we should pay attention to. Uh, Salam, Alaji Atal Mahmoud. We should learn how to ask necessary questions. And I'm going to give you an example. For instance, let me share the screen. Uh, Let me share the screen and show you this. So this is Quran chapter, I think it's Quran chapter 5 verse 101, right? <clears throat> so this is Quran chapter 5 verse 101. So where God says, Ya you are Lazina Amadu, let us alo and ashiyaha into Badalakum Tasukum. Then he says, Wa itas alo anha hina ginazalu Quran to Badalakum. Afa Allahu anha, Wallahu Gafurun Halim. He says, O oh, you who believe, do not ask about things. If made clear to you will distress you but if you ask about them when the Quran is revealed or is being revealed they will be made clear to you God has overlooked such for God is what is forgiving and clement now what happened why is it that God is cautioning us over this because what happened people have asked such they keep asking things which are not relevant to the Quran. So when they are giving the answers, it distresses them to the extent they become agnostic, atheist, or whatever have you, bushriks, and so on. So others before you have asked such, yet they became disbelievers by it, right? Uh -huh. So we have certain notions of the way people ask questions. They are not asking the questions to be guided. They are only asking just for the sake of argument and just to disbelieve right 
Ah, uh -huh. so that is the the the, the notion here. So the question that God is giving us is, do not ask about things if made clear to you will distress you. But if you ask about such things, when the Quran is revealed, it shall be made clear to you. So if you come asking questions for guidance, you should ask pertaining to the Quran. Don't go outside the context of the Quran trying to ask unnecessary questions. Like people will ask you, okay, if you're going to follow the Quran alone, where does it say you should do five salat? Or what does it say you should do two rakat? Or where does he say you should do? You understand? It's a stupid question. First of all, you don't have a book which is superior than the Quran to detect Islam for you. It is the Quran which dictates Islam. And the Quran told you at the time of the Prophet, salam, Islam was completed. Quran chapter 5 verse 3. So Islam was made complete. And we find it in the Quran, right? So if you come later on and you tell me, okay, show me where the Quran says I should pray five times. Or show me where it says I should do two, three rakats. That's a stupid question in the first place. <laughs> if the Quran doesn't tell you about rakat, who gave you that? Who? <laughs> because if out of your stupidity you tell me the Prophet all of his life he followed only the Quran. And it was the Quran he used. And when we don't see two rakats, three rakats, and you, you still are asking me that you are doing two rakats, three rakats, five prayers, and so on. And then you are now asking me, if I'm, if you say you are going to follow the Quran alone for guidance, show me where does it say you should do two rakats. What? The kind of questions you are asking will make you become a disbeliever. This is not to tell you don't ask questions. That's not what the verse is telling you. Chapter 5 verse 101 is not telling you don't ask questions. But you should ask wise questions. Because remember, Quran is the book of wisdom. Yasid wa quran al-Hakim. The Quran is the book of wisdom. It's a wise book. It's a wise Quran. It's a wise book. So now, imagine a wise man or somebody who is wise going to advise you. You just need to ask them the right question to get the right answer. So if Quran is the book of the wisdom and it's here to give you wisdom, you don't go with stupid questions. And that is my policy also. Baba Shwaib, you come and ask me stupid questions, I give you stupid answers. I'll make sure you look stupid when you ask me stupid questions. And this is why I do correctional officers then. I give people the chance to interact with me and then you see the loopholes in their logic. Simple questions you see people who can't answer. Simple reasoning you see they lack it. Irrationality is what they present to the table. That's why I do correction officers then. Uh, Salam, short hope deco. Uh, Sayman says, Can I get the Quran on Play Store? You can only, I think you can get it on Play Books. Go to Google Play Books, not Play Store. Play Store, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll work my way around it. We'll see what we can do about it, inshallah right uh even though there is a there is a website in the developing works is is still in the works it's called the the, the great quran dot com uh it should be totally ready maybe inshallah but before the end of this year right uh but if if you can reach me on my correctional officers then uh number then you might get a copy of the pdf but other than that i have websites where you can get it from if you check the videos I've pinned on my page, this page, you see I was given the uh, advertisement on how to get uh, a copy of, right? If that's, if you need the hardcover. Yeah, so good evening, Malik Yaqub. Uh, Nara Power Salam, I see you. Thank you for coming. Uh, JK, thank you for the stars. Thank you for the gifts. I appreciate that. Thank you for the support. Uh, it tells me how uh, people love what i do and i appreciate that right uh -huh. so aldo salam peace be upon you thank you all for coming uh now we have about 70 people watching live uh it's not bad so this is the correction officers then i'll be giving chance for the sectarians to hop on to join uh i'm putting first of all i'm putting how do you call it this one to send in the request and join but i would love for sectarians to join right not 
not anybody. Sectarians, I would love to them to join. Uh, salam, uh, servant of Allah. Yeah, uh, peace, dreams. Thank you for coming. So what happens is a lot of people, they lack what we call rationality. Rationality is, is, is very, very important when it comes to the matters of faith. Uh, because faith is something, there are certain things you can't actually, you can describe, but you can't actually show it to a person who doesn't have faith right uh that that is why we have atheists right atheists we have agnostic because there are certain things they let it go beyond bounds and they, they think no you have to be able to prove this to be right i'll tell you a logical fact right it is impossible for you not to have a great 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 grandfather or grandmother you do but you don't know them but can you prove who they are if, they, if you haven't been told their history or something or shown pictures, can you prove who they are? The answer is no. But you know for a fact, you know in your head that they exist. You can tell somebody they existed, but can you prove it? Your existence is their proof. So somebody will say, why will God speak to us from a book? Where do you want God to speak to you? From BBC or CNN? Where? Radio? <laughs> no, tell me. Where? Instagram? Or TikTok? <laughs> they will say, why is, why is God speaking to me from a book? Why, why does it have to be in Arabic language? Okay, you tell us. What language should God choose? Your native language. Are you perfect? Are you very well endowed in your own native language? <laughs> have you finished studying your native language? Can you count one to thousand in your language? So are you the one to tell God what he has to decide now? Imagine being in a cockpit where a boss decides how workers to work. And then you say, why should the boss put me in this position? Just quit if you don't like the job. God is never forcing anybody to believe, right? I'm going to quote a verse. Uh, it's an interesting verse, right? And this verse is found in Quran chapter 10, verse 99. I put it on the screen. <laughs> I put it on the screen here. Somebody say, so the universe is the proof of the creator. It's one of the proofs of the creator, right? That is why the Quran usually speaks about how God created you, the human being, and tells you the things you see around you, the trees, the, the rivers, the seas, everything around you, so that you know the proof that he put it there. When, when you go to a company and you are employed, the boss tells you what the job a cop passes and what the boss owes there. He tells you, this is my area, this is where you have to work, this belongs to me, this belongs to us, these tools are ours, you can use this, you can use that. That is the proof of him being a boss and show you what you need to do. Right? So, universe is one of the proofs. But if I take you to Quran chapter 10 verse 99, let's see uh, here. So when you check the verse, it says, And if your Lord had willed, whoever is on earth will have believed, all of them, kulluhu, jabi, and entirely, if he had willed for that to happen, you will believe, whether willingly or unwillingly, you will believe by force, if that is what he intended, right? Then it says, He's asking the prophet now. You can see there's a second person pronoun here. Afa anta. Anta means you're talking to the next person, the second person, right? So anta. He's now asking the prophet, so would you compel the people until they become believers? God is asking a question. Are you going to compel the people? Will you compel the people to become believers? If, because, because if God had willed, everybody would have believed. So that means he didn't will it to be like that. He gave us the free will to decide. If it was his will, everybody would do the way he wanted. 
but he gave you the human being the Jesus the free will to choose and decide so now he's asking the prophets are you going to compel the people to believe is it your job to force people to believe no you don't force people to believe and you see the word tukrihu. this tukrihu word you are seeing here it comes from the word ikra if you go to quran chapter 2 verse 256 where he says la deed. it means god never compelled anyone in the deed he doesn't compel it's not talking about you and i no it is god's the deed belongs to god so it is he is the one who doesn't compel people in the deed so la ikra fi deed katataba yada rushida bin al-gay faman yakfur bi taagut wa yu'minu bil lai faqad istamsaka bil urwat al so that is in Quran chapter 2 verse 256 maybe I can put it on the screen and let's see the verse right oh where, where is it sorry sorry yeah so that's the verse on the screen so he says there is no compulsion in the religion that is a a strict statement from god he's not talking about you the human beings or anything he's talking about him the deed belongs to god quran chapter 3 verse 19 in the dinner in the lie islam and islam belongs to god it doesn't belong to the arabs or anybody or jews or anybody no neither does it belong to the children of israel it belongs to god so the God who laid down the deed, he says, La ikra deed. He does not compel anyone. If he wants to compel, everybody will believe by force. <laughs> that is what we call enforcement. And that's tyranny. That is dictatorship. And God is not dictating for you. You decide for yourself. He gave you free will. You can choose to believe or disbelieve. That's why the devil has a free will. And he decided to be arrogant and disbelieve. So he gave you the free will. So he doesn't compel anybody in the deed. So there is no compulsion in the deed, in the religion, in Islam. God never compels anybody. There is a lot there. If you decide to do that's up to you. You don't do that's up to you. <laughs> there is a cat you want to do fine. You don't want to do that's up to you. You understand? Uh -huh. So you don't say, God is forcing me to go to Hajj. Where, where did he say that? Quran chapter 3 verse 97 he says when in lahi ala nasi hijjul bayti badi istata'a ilayhi sabila badi badi istata'a ilayhi sabila Quran chapter 3 verse 97 whoever it has the capable or capability or the means to it or you are able to go that's up to you so God never forces anybody in the deed right but if you are a believer you want to be dutiful to God you are doing it based on the faith you have and that defines faith you do things because you have faith in it so you don't force people to believe what you're saying or what you do or what you believe in because it gets to your point they tell you can you prove it what i would say i go to bring god for them to see physically they forgot they told moses the same thing did you bring god for them to see the answer is no so are you going to force people to believe you it doesn't work that way right uh huh. So, salam, uh, the Balo world, the Balo go I see you. Uh, but it is says to me, it makes sense, mashallah. Yeah, thank you, brother. So, let me take you back to Quran chapter 10, verse 99. There was a point I wanted to pass across, that's why I mentioned that chapter, right? We go 400. So, he says, and if your Lord had willed, whoever is on earth will have believed all of them entirely so there's no exception right so will you or are you going to compel the people until they become believers you can't right and apart from this verse then i take you to quran chapter 12 verse 103 now check what god says in the next verse we are going god says and most of the people are not believers even if you desire even if you wish even if you want it to be like that it will not be they will not believe you are you going to force somebody to believe what you are saying <laughs> right 
Uh -huh. So that is why when I see people get angry at people just because they don't believe in something, I find that as I find that as a stupid logic to 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 have. Why will you hate somebody just because they don't believe something you said? Are you going to force people to believe you? So if God of all people who created the heavens and the earth couldn't didn't even force anybody to believe him or not, why why should you, it be a challenge for you? Why must you compel people? And that is why the Bushiriks, they hate people like me if I say I don't believe in their books. You believe in man-made books. And I say, I'm not sure I'm saying, I don't believe in such books. And you hate me because I say I don't believe in your old fabrications. Is it from God? The answer is no. Are there contradictions? The answer is yes. So I don't need a book which has contradiction. Case close. But they will say, oh, it's the jail, it's Kafir. He's Antichrist. That's what I love with evil kills. The sectarians, they are kaput in the head. So the next verse, I take you to Quran chapter 20, uh, chapter 18, verse 29, right? Surah Al-Kaf. And then let's see what the verse says, right? So that is, oh, sorry, verse 29, right? Yeah. So the verse says, he tells the messenger and say, the truth is from your what? Your Lord. So whoever wills, you see here, the wills. That is why you, you are given the free will, right? If God had willed, we will all believe by force. And he will force us to believe. So, but he said, no, I'm going to give you the human being the free will and the genes. You have the free will now. So God says, and say, he's telling the messenger to say, the truth is from your Lord. So whoever wills, then let him believe. And whoever wills, then let him what? Disbelieve. So what is your issue? Where, where is the hate for? Somebody decided to be an atheist because God knows that. He gave him the free will to become an atheist. Yes, you want to be atheist, that's your choice. You want to be agnostic, that's your choice. But however, on the battlefront, you have to use your rationality to prove to me why you are an atheist, or you are a sectarian, you are a mushrik, or you are this. When we are facing logically, head to head, face to face, you have to use logic to prove to me why you decided to be this or that. But I cannot force you to believe what I believe. That's the point. That is what differentiates us with animals. If you go to Quran chapter 25, verse 44, God says, do you think that most of the people listen or reason? And God says, they are just like livestock. So that differentiates us with the animals. And God says, they are far astray. Right? Those people who, who, who fail to listen and reason. God says, even an animal, a livestock is better than such a person. Yeah. So, my point of having uh, dialogues or interactions with people, sometimes people will be watching my videos, the correction officers, then they say, oh, I'm not sure why are you wasting your time with the ignorant ones? No, I, I'm not wasting my time. Do you know how much people benefit from such videos? Do you watch? Look, it helps you mentally, psychologically, right? To know how to deal with people who are not level intact with your rationality. And that is why sometimes there are certain things we cannot speak to our kids about because we know their, their brain is not up to that capacity where they can comprehend what you're saying. Right? So that's why when our kid starts reasoning and asking us big questions, we are stunned. We look at them, we're like, oh my God, did you just hear what the kid said? Oh, I thought they are kids. I don't know that they are smart like that. Yeah, because you've been looking down on the kids thinking they are not wise enough. Their brain is working, it's functioning very, very well. And they know what is going on. You see the point. So, these are some of the things uh, we don't pay attention to and we think it's a joke. When you are dealing with people, I do correction officers then. You can see me, I talk with Christians, I talk with Sunnis, Shia, Tijaniya, you name it. Uh, the sectarians out there, they know me. They know me very, very well. Right? And that is why, with the help of one brother, uh, uh, Muhammad, he, uh, he got me this uh, slogan I have. Right? That is the Baba Shwaib next to my uh, wall here, the correctional officer. <laughs> this is to set the Bushiriks abuzz. 
<laughs> they are frustrated when they see the orders, right? And now that I have the best platform they can ever imagine, and I'm willing to put them up, set them up as scapegoats, actually. They are scared. They are running away big time. And when it is only by platform when they come, they say they are students. They are almost scholars. <laughs> I got to one. Now I'm to resign. <laughs> you remember that uh, there is one as uh, Imam or something he came from Bali and then he came on my platform. And then he says, I want to know how to pray. Then I ask, I ask him, why do you pray when you don't know how to pray? And then he says, oh, I, I just do this way. I don't know. But I thought they say hadith shows me how to pray. The hadith doesn't have the prayer in one particular hadith like this from A to Z. They don't have it. They didn't have a mixture of taking chunks here, chunks here, chunks here. I say, ah, one time I saw the prophet praying like this. And I saw him holding his beard or praying like this. Or I saw him doing this to whip this devil. You know, many a time they sit down in their salat and they use their hand on the on the knee like this, and they do this. When you ask them, what are you doing? They say, oh, the prophet said I should do this. I'll be whipping the devil. Like, uh, uh, um, what? Is that how the man-made religions can make you so dumb and foolish? Why can't you reason for once? Right? So... Usually, our rationality is very, very important. It's necessary, right? We don't have to just uh, be blind followers and foolish people when it comes to the matters of faith. Understanding faith is very, very important. I can put my faith in something that is after I've tested it. <laughs> yeah. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, I just remembered one thing. Let me let me use this platform. It's been like three weeks, right? About three weeks uh, when I had a bad news from about a brother. He's called Bobo Ali. He's, he's from Nigeria. He used to be one of my 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 my, my great uh, supporters or fans. I would say he likes what I do. He appreciates the truth I present. Unfortunately, I think he had a like some tumor or something. He went to India and unfortunately he lost his life. Right. And I was lost in the moment because he used to be part of my WhatsApp group. I think his number is still even in the WhatsApp group, right? And his his brother told me actually they lost him. Was it like three weeks ago? And I forgot to, to mention it on my last uh, programs uh, on YouTube and Facebook, unfortunately. Uh, but inshallah, I know peace, the peace is upon him, inshallah. Uh, Robson, salam alaik, salam, you're welcome. Uh, we have 20 people live watching. Uh, thank you for the gifts, uh, JK, I appreciate that. Uh -huh. So what, what I want people to understand is, uh, uh -huh. okay. They said the voice is cracking, is it true? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the mic is becoming a nightmare for me right now. So let me stay away from it. Like when something is poison, just like the hadith, you stay away from it, right? So let me stay away from the mic. Yeah. So I've been online for 38 minutes now. I think uh, 35 minutes, right? And the notion of this program, the correctional officers did, is to have it in continu continuity, right? So that I will get the sectarians to hop on. As you see normally on my correctional officers did uh, series that I have on YouTube, you will see uh, about 15, 20 minutes videos I did with sectarians it is usually taken from TikTok. It says TikTok they join on my platforms. Uh, usually most of the people, they wish they could disprove my claims or what I say. But the point is they, they, they know they don't have knowledge. But the point is they wish they can strike me down. And uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but God says if 
If he should support you, that can defeat you. And I know God supports me because I support God, right? So if you are a sectarian, you think, oh, I want to face Baba Shriver, I want to disprove him. You're wasting your time because, like, I'm going to take you into circles. You'll be fooling yourself at the end of the day. Uh, the ballot word says, bro, can I share the PDF to people for free? No, you can't. You can only do it when you recommend that people to get in touch with me, right? Or you give them the link where they can get it. You, the ones I've been able to share to are the people I know I've been, I've talked to. So I, I, I've gotten in touch. So I know where the PDF goes. But you don't just share it to somebody just like that without because I need to know where it is going. And that is why uh, that is why I'm, uh, I was thinking of the website, thegreatquran.com, right? Uh, even though it is still in the works, let me see. The great Quran.com where people can actually uh, access the Quran on the web page directly, right? But it's not it's not fully ready yet, so it's still it works, but that's the website. So and then the app will be coming with the app. Whoever downloads it, I'll get a the the you know feedback of how many people are downloaded and have it, right? But for people who are really, really interested, and I don't know them, there's always a link to get it. I, I put the, the video on my page on TikTok. They can actually see it and go there and get it, right? Uh -huh. So uh, somebody's asking a question. Let me see. Robson. Robson says, are you planning on ever going to Speaker's Corner? Yes, uh, it's, it's, it's part of my, my I would say my my wishes or my I would say it's my plan right now yes but it's part of my wishes uh, I can't say this year this year I already have about one or two plans right so but yes when the opportunity comes I'll go right uh, it has to be for a tangible reason I can't just get up and go say i'm going to the speaker's corner right uh -huh. so i i would love to go when the opportunity comes inshallah <clears throat> yeah so what what we fail to realize when it comes to matters of belief i can tell you i'm the richest man right now now, what does it change in your life if you believe what does it change nothing what does it change in your life if you disbelieve nothing but why will you hate me for saying i'm the richest man in the world why why will you hate me now this is where rationality comes in people don't know how to use rationality so they become irrational if you know how to use your rationality, you know certain things are not to, to be taken seriously. You can just list it and let it go, right? If somebody just say, for instance, for people who watch football, somebody just says, hey, Lionel Messi is not the best player in the world. <laughs> you also just to say, okay, <laughs> that's it. Are you going to try to prove to such a person <laughs> Messi is, is the best? Why? Why would you use such energy to prove yourself? We have certain things you don't need to argue about, right? You can only argue if somebody says, hey, I saw in the Quran it says you should kill people. Yeah, then you have to argue about that. Then you ask the person where. So you don't let them prove it. Maybe they are misquoting a verse. These are things you use your logic and reasoning to argue about, right? But don't go argue about unnecessary things. It will waste your energy and your brain. For nothing. Uh, Robson says, Inshallah, the Bushriks will not like it. I know. They, they never like me. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm their worst nightmare <laughs> at the moment. 
Yeah, I know. So I don't I don't want them to run so much because when they run away, all of them run away, it becomes boring. I, I just want them around a bit. <laughs> when they run, there's no fun anymore. So they have to come around. Uh, the ballot one says, how about shutting the mouth with critical questions? And that's what I just answered. If somebody says the Quran says, oh, you should go and kill people, then you can ask them, where does it say that? That's a critical question. Let them prove it. Where? They will say, okay, uh, I thought they say, they say you, thought, you thought what? So now you are pushing them to the submissive zone where they will surrender and say, okay, I don't know. I, th I thought. Ah, stop talking. That's what I tell the people. Stop talking. I can't tell you to stop thinking. Thinking, you have to think as a human being, but stop talking, please. So when you are pushing people to the corner, always what they will say is, I thought, oh, I thought Islam started with Prophet Muhammad. You thought what? How can Islam start with Prophet Muhammad when he is told to follow the creed of Abraham? Quran chapter 16, verse 123. And he himself said, God has guided him to the straight path, the creed of Abraham. Quran chapter 6, verse 162. So how can, uh, sorry, 161. Chapter 6, verse 161. So how can Prophet Muhammad be the bringer of Islam? Or how we see the inventor of Islam? Right? Yeah. Ah, so you use critical means. That's why when you listen to the word and follow the best of it, you are you become an intelligent person and you are well guided because you know what you are looking for in people's statements. And that's why correctional officer, I choose my words carefully when I'm talking to people. And when people misquote me, it, it strikes me. Like, I guess it strikes me inside. I don't like people misquoting me. So I choose my words carefully. And that will give you an edge when you're having a dialogue or a debate because that gives you an edge. It shows you that the other party is not listening well. It's not paying attention. A lot of sectarians haven't, uh, haven't been taught how to listen and discern and then draw conclusions. No. They've been programmed to think in a certain pattern. So even if you are answering their questions, they are not paying attention. They are only about to just ask you questions. Or oh, how do you pray? You are going to follow the Quran. Okay, how do you pray? Because they've been told you, can't know, you don't know how to pray if you don't follow the Quran. So now take them back. And say, how did Prophet Abraham learn how to pray? Prophet Abraham, we are following his creed. How did he learn how to pray? The last time I checked, he was oblivious to what who God is and what God is. He was looking at the star, he looked at the moon, he looked at the sun. He says, oh, could it be this is my Lord? Could it be this is my Lord? The last time I checked, he didn't follow any Hadith book. Right? But he knows how to pray. And he is the one who told God, Rabbi Jahalni Bukima Salat wa Mizuriati Rabbana wa Takabal Dua. Quran chapter 14, verse 40. He told God to make him an establisher of the Salat and also for his descendants. And he told God to answer his Dua. And God answered. He didn't follow any external book to learn how to do Salat. But here we are, we have people who tell you, no, you can't follow the Quran alone. Don't, don't. Look, anytime you see me doing lectures, I do programs, mine is just to be able to teach people how to, to use their logic, right? To use their rationality. I'm not saying you should believe whatever I say or, you know, reject whatever I say. But it's the ability to analyze the things I say and the way you want to, you want to process the things I say rest on you. You have to find, relax and find the time to, to program for yourself how you can take the steps to understand what I say. And that's why I'm available to interact with people. If you don't understand what I said, just take one of my videos, send me the link and say, oh, brother, in minutes five, you said this. What did you mean by that? Then I can clarify. That is the point. Right? Yeah, thank you very much. The great. I appreciate that. Aha. Uh -huh. So... Kindly tell the sectarians, Baba Shrib is online, the correctional officer, right? And I'm allowing them to join as a guest. I can allow them. They should come. Let's interact. They ask me a question. I ask them a question. And let's see if they are actually on track. 
Because sectarians, they do have a problem, a big, big problem, right? They think they are superior and they think they have the large number. So they always see you as subservient. And they want to act like they are in charge of you. So my duty is to teach people how to maneuver around this kind of tactics. And then be on top when you are dealing with sectarians. When they are throwing hurling questions at you, they keep hurling, don't be quick to answer. A sectarian will never be convinced with the verse of the Quran because he's been told there is something superior than the Quran, which explains the Quran, which is the Hadith. So you just dish it out verses to a sectarian. He just reads and laughs at you because his scholar has been told something different. They haven't been taught how to examine test by itself. What they have been taught is they tell them you read one verse, you go to the hadith or the fasirs, the fasir of Ibn Kathir, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Abbas. Go there and check. That's what they tell you. At Tabari. Huh? Then we have the Jal Jalalaid, the two Jalals. So they will keep giving you all these tafasirs and tell you go and study this to come and follow the Quran. By the time you finish, you are dead. Can you finish reading all the tafsir books? Can you finish studying? I had one video. I don't know if I can play it. Let me see. I had one video here. The Bible says, according to, according to a mushrik, he said, Prophet Muhammad belongs to Prophet Abraham lineage when going back. Where does he say that in the Quran? Where? <laughs> You should have asked the person, where does he say that? Then you tell them to prove it, right? Even though the Quran, when we take, uh, I think Quran chapter 2, chapter 2 verse 128, I'm going to share the screen and let's see. Uh, I'm going to show you something and let's see how true is that claim, right? Yeah, here is the verse and let me enlight, enlarge it, right? So chapter 2 verse 128. It says, Abraham and Ismail, they are, do, they are, they, they are making a supplication, right? Our Lord and make us submitters, that is Muslimaid. Two Muslims, right? That's that's why I put into bracket both. Make us Muslims submit us to you and of our descendants and of our descendants a submitting nation to you and show us our rights and forgive us. Indeed, you are the compassionate the merciful right so you see chapter 2 verse 128 Ibrahim and Ishmael they said our Lord and make us submit us to you make us Muslims to you and of our descendants so this is where I want you to check descendants now <clears throat> when we say descendants Maybe I can share it here. Let's see. Yeah. So when we say descendants, let me see if I can put it to the screen. Add source. Add what? What should I add? Uh, window capture. Select. Yeah. Uh, not big enough. Sorry. I thought I could share this to be big enough, but it's quite unfortunate. Let me see. Can I zoom it? No. Yeah, not able to zoom. So, quite unfortunate. So, I take it up. Yeah. 
Anyways, I put this one down. So when we say descendant, we are talking about all of the offspring of a given progenitor, right? We are talking about an ancestor in the direct line you come from. That is, you are the descendant of such a person. So the supplication Ibrahim alayhi salam and uh, Ismail alayhi salam, the supplication they did, they told God to raise up a, a, a submitting a Muslim nation, right? And from their descendants, so from the descendants of Abraham and from the descendants of what? Ishmael, right? So even though Ishmael is his son, and again he has a son called Isaac, Ishaq. So Ishaq also, out of him came Muslims, because the children of Israel, they are also Muslims also, right? Uh -huh. So that is, if you go to Quran chapter 12, uh, chapter 2 verse, uh, I think 140, yeah. So according to this verse I just read, Quran chapter 2 verse 128, yes, the descendants who God chose, they are Muslims, they are Muslim nation, right? So God chose them. So it is part of the supplication Ibrahim did. So based on this verse, we can deduce with that, right? Uh -huh. Because if you if you fulfill the verse, uh, that is, let me put it on the screen. If we fulfill 128 and we go to 129, right? It says, our Lord, and raise among them a messenger. Right, and this this messenger, the promise was fulfilled in Quran chapter three, verse one hundred sixty-four. So raise among them a messenger from them to recite your verses to them, and to teach them the book and the wisdom, and to purify them. Indeed, you are the Almighty, the Wise. So based on Quran chapter two, verse one hundred twenty-eight to one hundred twenty-nine. We can deduce that yes, uh, Muhammad alayhi salam is from the descendants of Ishmael and Ibrahim, right? Uh -huh. So that is the point. But then, like I said, next time somebody makes a claim, let them prove it and see where they are. Uh, this thing is coming from. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, salam Abdul Samad, you're welcome. Abdul Salam Adam, you're welcome. So, uh, the sectarians, if they are here, they can join. If you are a Sunni, you are a Sheet, you are a Tijaniya, you are Ahmadiyya, you are a Christian, you have a problem with the correction of Islam here. I've opened the link, you can send your invite, and I'll bring you on. If you don't know how to send the invite, just just write to me, I'll bring you on. Uh, how would you explain verse 4, chap uh, verse 40, 46? Uh, you mean chapter 40, verse 46, right? When we speak about life in the grave. Life in the grave? I don't think the correct word is life in the grave. We, we rather say life after death. So let's see, chapter 40, verse 46. Uh, I'll rather say, here, yeah, uh, let me share the verse. I'll start from verse, uh, let's see. Let me start from 45. So Robson asked a question, right? Consequently, God safeguarded him from, from the evil of what they schemed. That is, God is, is talking about, when you start from above, he's talking about Musa alayhi salam against Pharaoh, right? Consequently, God safeguarded him from the evil of what they schemed. And the people of Pharaoh were afflicted with what? with the worst of punishment. Verse 46, the fire being exposed to it, the fire, that is the punishment is the fire, being exposed to, they will be exposed to it, 
morning and what? And evening. They will be showed, and this has been uh, further explained in Surah Al-Takathur. Al-Aqabu Al-Takathur Atta Zurtubu Al-Makabur Kalla Sawfa Ta'labud Subba Kalla Sawfa Ta'labud Kalla Law Ta'labud Ilman Yakin La Tara Udda Al-Jaib that is uh, Surah Al-Takasur, uh, and that is chapter 102. Whoever has the chapter next to you, just check it. Chapter 102 is called Takasur, chapter of the plurifilation, right? It is there. So when you read these verses, it says, And the day the hour takes place, that is on the day of judgment, after showing them how the hellfire looks like, on the day of judgment, they will be admitted into it. So, admit the people of Pharaoh into the severest punishment. That is, on the day the hour will take place, on the day of judgment. And God says, and then they will be arguing in the fire. Right? And the weak will say to those who were arrogant, indeed, we were your followers. Ah, uh, that is Tabi Eid. So, can you spare us a portion of the fire. 48. Those who were arrogant will say, Indeed, we are all in it. Indeed, God has already judged between the servants. Right? And it says here, 49. And those in the fire will say to those, to, uh, to the keepers, that is Hazanati uh, of Jahannam, of hell, Invoke your Lord to reduce for us a day from the punishment. Right? Uh huh. So let's leave that here. Yeah, Salam uh, Labi, you're welcome. Uh, salam Maroon Khalif, Salam brother, you're welcome. So, Robson, based on the question you ask in Quran chapter 40, verse 46. God already spoke about such things in Quran chapter 102, right? Surah to Takathur. It talks about when you die, after you die, your soul is taken away. That soul, if it's a bad, evil soul, it will be exposed. You will be, you'll be made to see hell morning and evening. Then on the day of judgment, that person, entity, will now be put into hellfire. So it's not as if you are in the grave and you are facing the punishment. No. The dead body is in the grave. Yes, that is waste. It is the soul going back. So let's see where the soul goes when somebody is a bad person. Let, let me show you where the soul goes. So now I'll take you to the Quran. And I take you to Quran chapter 23 verse 99. So when you go to Quran chapter 23 verse 99, it says, until when death comes to one of them, he says, Lord, send me back. Now he wants to go back, right? Verse 100. That I may act righteous in what I have left. That is to left behind. Taraktu. Then God says, Nay, indeed it is a word he is stating. But behind them is a partition. That is barzahun. Until the day they are resurrected. So that person will be there. That's his soul will be in that place. Behind him there is a barzakh. So he's, he, that the soul will be in another realm. Another realm. And then there is a barzakh. A partition. Between the soul and the world. So this entity who is dead. His soul cannot interfere. That is, that is why the dead body is buried. In the, in the soil. Right? So what happens is he will be, the barzakh will be separated between him and the earth and the world till the day of resurrection. You see, then verse 101 says what? And when the horn is blown, there will be no genealogy, right? Genealogy, that is a family tree to have, to keep having descendants, right? And among them on that day, nor will be ask about each other on the day of judgment if you don't have to want to know about the reference go to surah to abasa chapter 80 and read from verse 33 to verse 37 you will see why god says on that day anything about this is my brother this is my father this is my mother that thing will end on that day <laughs> you will not be looking for your son 
You don't be looking for your daughter or your brother or your father or your mother. That issue is just existing in this earth, on this world. <laughs> That's when we say, oh, here's my brother. Oh, he'll meet my sister. Oh, meet my lovely uh, sister. That's my lovely mom. That's the only thing we do on this world. The day here after that thing doesn't exist anymore. So God is now telling you, chapter 23, verse 101, and when the horn is blown, there will be no genealogy. There's no more family tree again <laughs> among them on that day. Nor will they ask about each other. You say, oh, where is my, my lovely sister that I miss? I used to disturb her. No, no more. Uh, no, 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 no. You don't know her. Because you didn't decide to have that sister in this world. It's God who actually chose the family you'll be born. Right? He chose the father who is going to father you. He chose the mother who is going to mother you. Look, I was born in Ghana. If God was to negotiate with me before coming, do you, know, do you think I would choose Ghana? No, I would not choose. So that's why he didn't negotiate with you. He put you where he wants you. It's just like a football coach who has football players. He decides where the player has to play. You could be a striker, but the coach can decide to put you in the defense because that is what is needed at that time. So God decided I'll be a black person and he decided I'll be born in Ghana. I don't regret it, but had he given me the choice, I would have chosen different because your choice is always different from God's choice, right? And God's choice is always the best. So I'm, I'm just only speaking from a wisdom perspective. I know somebody who has a shallow mind would not understand my point. Right? Okay. So now that explains that part. Uh, so Robson says, so you will already know if you go to heaven or hell before the day of judgment. Yes. <laughs> you are going to be told. And let me give you that evidence also. Uh, I take you to Quran chapter 16, verse 28 to 29, right? So, chapter 16, verse 28, it says, Those whom the angels will cause their death in wrong, wronging their souls, thus they will offer submission on that day. We did not do any wrong. Then the angels will tell them, certainly, indeed, God is aware of what you were doing. Then verse 29, so enter the gates of hell eternally. Therein and the abode of the arrogant ones is wretched. Now, this is what the angels will tell the person when he is dying as a bad person. But this place he's going, he's like a, you know, when you go to to for whoever has traveled by flight before, when you go to the airport, after check-in, you go to a waiting room, you wait, because you already know now you are going to the flight anyways, because after check-in, everything is intact. So you'll be told, okay, yes, have a nice flight. Then you go ahead and sit down and wait for the boarding time so that you can board the flight and go, right? So similarly, the angels will tell the person his destination where you are going. That is at the time of death. And again, chapter 16 Verse 32, right? Those whom the angels will cause their death, in what? In goodness. They, the angels, will say, peace be upon you, right? And then they will say, enter the garden for what you have done. So they will be told, this is where you are going. So enter the garden, you go already. And after you die, nothing can change this thing the angels just told you. Nothing will change that. And say, oh, you saw... The, after the angels have given you dirty slaps that you are going to hell, then they will say, oh, the Bushiriks back in, uh, on earth, they prayed for you. So after the prayer, we have decided, God has decided to change the rule. Since he initially told us to take you to hell, now we have changed it, you are going to paradise. No, no, it doesn't work that way. So let's go and see. Quran chapter 8 verse 50, right? Anybody who tells you, oh, if somebody is a bad person and they die, and the angels tell them they are going to hell, can that be changed? Let's go and see if that can be changed. That will not change, right? So Quran chapter 8 verse 50. And if you could see when the angels caused the death of those who disbelieved, slapping their faces and their backsides, right? Taste the punishment of the fire. That is for what your hands have sent forth. 
and that God is never unjust to the servants. Now imagine somebody who is going to go to hell and he has already getting the dirty slaps on his face. Angel slapping you from the front and angel slapping you from the back. So after all these slaps, then you tell me some mushriks on earth prayed for you. So because of that prayer, God decided that, oh, the, the slaps, <laughs> we have to erase it. Because now people pray for you. Somebody like Mufti Beg prayed for you, so you are going to gender. No, 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 I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. Right? Uh -huh. It doesn't. In Quran chapter 39 verse 61, you can only be saved by your achievements that you have done, any good deeds you have done between you and God. That is the only thing that can save you on the day of judgment. Quran chapter 39 verse 61. Right? So bear in mind. That is the only thing to save you. So, Budavir says, what about the mercy of Allah? When will that be administered? And where does he say that? Where did God say he will have mercy on somebody? I don't understand. Is it anywhere he said that? That he will have mercy on people to enter the paradise? His mercy is only for the believers. In Quran chapter Quran chapter 33 verse 43 Right? Quran chapter 33 verse 43 He is the one who, Oh, sorry. Let me share the screen. He is the one Who reaches out to you together with his what? Angels. In order to bring you out of the darknesses into the what? Light. And he is merciful to the believers. Right? So the word is, وَكَيْنَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ rahima. So this is mercy. God is merciful to the believers. Right? Imagine going to a courtroom and the judge has to judge you for killing somebody. Right? And then you expect the judge to show you mercy, but you never showed mercy to a victim. And then you want God to show you mercy, or the judge to show you mercy? It doesn't work that way. If you are guilty, you should be punished for that. Mercy will only be shown to already... If, if, and if you have done good, why should God show you mercy? Because you qualify already. So Quran chapter 39 verse 61. Let me show you the verse. Quran chapter 39 verse 61. And God will rescue those who were pious by their what? Achievement. No evil will touch them, nor will they grieve. That is on the day of judgment, right? And the day, it says what? And on the day of resurrection, you will see those who what? Who lied about God with their faces blackened. Then it will say, is there no abode in hell for the arrogant ones? And God will rescue those who were pious by their what? Achievements. So it is not by mercy. It is by your achievements. <laughs> it's just like a worker. You get your salary based on your achievements. You don't get salary based on the mercy from your boss. <laughs> Husband and <Lord>, will okay. <laughs> uh, It is the Bushriks who are only telling you God is going to show mercy on the day of judgment. It's just like in the exams hall. You fail your exams and you want the teacher to show you mercy. How? So that you pass how? <laughs> it doesn't work. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that is the point. Yeah, Barud says, Alhamdulillah, yes. He says, God is the creator of all things and he is aware. He is a representative of all things. Yes. So it is not by mercy. And let's see again where Bonavir uh, says, so no intercession. Okay, let's see who has the power to make intersection. Right? Quran chapter 39 verse 43. Oh, sorry. Oh, I wasn't supposed to touch that part. Quran chapter 39 verse 43. Right? Let's see who is going to have the power to do intercession. Quran chapter 39 verse 43. Or do they have intercessors besides God? God is asking a question. God is asking you and I a question. 
right? He says, or do they have intercessors besides God? Do we have such? So let's see the answer. Say, what if they do not possess anything? Nor do they reason. What if they don't possess anything and they, they do not reason? Why? What if? So that, this is the answer here. Verse 44. Say, to God belongs the intercession entirely. The word jabi and for anybody who understands Arabic comprehensibly or grammatically, God says, to God belongs the intercession that he used the word entirely. You understand? Entirely. So he says, to him belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Thus, to him you will be returned. <laughs> It's scary, right? So let me show you what is more scary. I take you to Quran chapter 82. I'm going to show you the scarier part. Chapter 82, verse what? 19. Hey, sorry, verse. let's start from verse 17, right? Chapter 82, verse 17. See what is scary here. And what will make you know what is the day of judgment? And so what will make you know what is the day of judgment? It is the day no soul will possess anything for what? Another soul. And the command on that day belongs to what? God. So we have been fooled for years to make us think, Oh, Prophet Muhammad is going to intercede for you. Oh, your father is going to intercede. Oh, Prophet Abraham is going to... Oh, excuse me. You've been lied to big time. People have been fooled. Oh, let, let, me, let me even make it worse. Quran chapter 6, verse 52. Uh, let me start from verse 51. Right? Quran chapter 6, verse 51. And God says, And one by it. One by what? One by the Quran. By it. Those who fear that they will be what? Assembled before their Lord. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm warning you by the book of God. Right? Not by my own words. So before they are Lord, they have no guardian nor what intercessor. So how how explicit, how much more explicit can this words be for anybody listening or watching? He, the creator of the universe, is telling you that you should be warned by the Quran. Those who fear that they will be assembled before their Lord for the day of judgment. And he's telling you they have no guardian. No intercessor besides him. Perhaps they will what? They will become pious. He wants you to become pious because on the day of judgment, it is only your piousness. And the achievement of your piousness is what, is what will save you. Quran chapter 39 verse 61. And then you are looking for intercessor. If you are a good worker, why do you want your supervisor to come and talk on your behalf again? If I'm a good worker, why do I need somebody to come and intercede for me in front of my boss? My work should show the results for it. I don't need anybody to come and talk on behalf of me and tell my boss, oh, he's a good worker. No, the results will tell the boss how good you are. <laughs> and God is not asleep. He's looking at us every day, 24 hours, every minute, every second. He's watching you. And then you want somebody to come and do what? To intercede? How? Right? So now let's continue to 52. Can Prophet Muhammad intercede for anybody? Let's see what the Quran will say. So God told the Prophet, and do not dismiss those who invoke their Lord in the morning and evening, seeking his countenance, right? Nothing of their recording is upon you, Muhammad. Nor is anything of your recording upon them. So were you to dismiss them, then you will be of the transgressors. So you see, Prophet Muhammad himself is not untouchable. Had he fumbled, God would deal with him. He would be a transgressor himself. So these are some of the things people don't pay attention. And they think that the Islam is a joke. <laughs> oh my God. So you see the scariest verses I've just showed you. People are sleeping, thinking, oh, Prophet Muhammad is going to intercede. On the day of judgment, he will say, Adalaha, today is for me. Hey, come, come, I'll intercede for you. He doesn't know you. How can he intercede for you? 
If prophets can intercede, Abraham will have interceded for his son. Abraham will have interceded for his father. Lot will have interceded for his wife. Yeah. It is it does it you for for what? Did you do the job well? No. Oh, can you intercede of on, on, on my behalf so that my boss can pay me my salary, even though I didn't work? I, I'm a bad worker. <laughs> There's a video circulated I think on TikTok. <laughs> the guy is asking. He says, boss, uh, uh, how much did you pay the guy? Uh, yeah. So you see, thank you very much, uh, JK. I appreciate the gift. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you for this. I appreciate that. You know what? The point is, the, the funny part is, JK, thank you. Uh, the funny part is, people don't actually want to pay attention to the instruction of the boss. And they want to listen to other workers. And that, that's how we, we be fooled. The boss is God. And we are dealing with the book of God. Let God decide, dictate his deed for you. Don't go listen to ignorant, I call them ignorant scholars. The reason is because they are ignorant of what the Quran says. If they had the knowledge of the Quran, that is what they will teach you. They've been taught hadith since they were kids and they became scholars in the hadith sector. So it is hadith books they can be telling you lies. And then they'll tell you, oh, that will enter paradise except the one God has mercy upon. Then what is the need of us doing righteous deeds? <laughs> we should stop doing righteous deeds and keep hoping. That's just like the Christians. They will say Jesus came and died for our sins. Then why is God still punishing you for your sins? Why do they have earthquake, tsunami? Uh, Hurricane Katrina, whatever. Why, why are you still dying with tornadoes? Why are you still being punished? Right? Uh -huh. So this is how people don't reason. Right? Uh -huh. So we've been sleeping because we, we, we fail to study the words of God. Right? Uh, the last... Bonavir uh, says, what was the last verse Ayat... Last ayat reference, brother. Uh, I quoted chapter 82, verse, verse 17 to 19. And now I quoted Quran chapter 6, verse 51 to 52. Prior to that, I quoted chapter 33, verse 43. And I quoted also Quran chapter 39, verse 43 to 44. Yes. Uh -huh. So this video, I will try to to put it on uh, YouTube, hopefully, then you can rewatch it and then benefit from it, inshallah. Yeah? Uh huh. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've done one hour 22 minutes. Uh, if somebody is willing to ask a question, you can type it. If the sectarians are here, the, the Sunnis, the, <laughs> the, the Bushriks also, if they are here, they can, you can join me on board, right? I've opened the, the guest for invite. So uh, you're welcome, Budavir. You're welcome. God bless you too. Uh, I've opened the... Uh, I think I have a video I, I, need, I need to show you. I need to play for you a video, right? Let's see. There is a, a video, a funny video actually, a very funny video. This guy is Mohammed Hijab. I want you to hear what he said concerning polygamy or something. You, I'm going to show you how he lie about God, right? A second wife. Can he says? Can he say no? I don't. Yes, you can. You can say that. You can say that. Yes, I, I personally believe this awesome. is uh, the hadith from the master. Uh, the prophet said you can do it. Uh, yeah, so I believe. I believe it's possible. Now, having said this, all, I said this is the abstract ruling. Really. Yeah. But in implementation, okay. Now, do because like I said, the hukum can take different rulings based on a personal side. If someone does this and they get caught, for example. Or something happens, or yeah, I mean, 
Or, he, like a... or she just asks him, where were you last night? Yeah, but even that, you can lie. Uh, We've already so, said... so you are allowed to lie yes, anything yeah. related to the relationship? I believe, I, believe, I believe it's not anything because there are some things you can never lie about in Islam. Yeah. For example, you can never lie about the religion of Islam. You can never lie about something which relates to the rights of the person. You can never lie about something that relates to the vested interests like the children, for example. There's, there's things you can never lie about, but the, I believe yes, you can. But, 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 but is, are you saying in the context of, for example, it's going to, it's going to ruin the ma family unit, so he's lying to protect his family? I, look, I'm saying to you, I don't recommend this, but you are, we started off by saying that there's two things. There's one aspect which is jurisprudential yeah. and another aspect which is application. Jurisprudential, the man can do it. It's up to the man. No woman can take that right amount away from the man. Okay, it's impossible. So, so, so let's say, look at this right, yeah? So yeah. that Islamically, any of us can get a secret second wife. Absolutely. Or any man for that No, not secret. We, we can get... Islamically, no. there is no problem same, same. in a man getting married to another <laughs> woman in Misyar without the first wife's knowledge. However, the question is... And there's no, there's no khilaf in this. Yeah. There's, no, there's actually... I've not seen one solitary difference of opinion in any of the 14 generations of Islam. Often. It's not there. Which is? Any scholar saying that no, a woman needs to know, she needs to tell her, okay. doesn't okay. exist. Yeah, that's it. Having said that, do I recommend it? No, I don't recommend it in general. No, we'll come to it. We'll come. Hold you. We'll, yes. we'll, we'll, yes. Why do I yes. recommend yes. it? Yes. Okay, yes. guys. <laughs> um, after this show, if you see any of us dead, please come to our janazah. <laughs> uh, please make dua for us and Sadaq uh, Sorry, can I ask uh, one more thing? Yes, please We're talking about the religion of Islam. Like, you know, Allah says, I'm not here to. Would you respect? I'm, I, I don't prostrate myself to the emotions of yeah. women or men or anyone else. I'm, I'm speaking about the religion. This is a ruling. We cannot, I, we cannot distort the rulings. There's an ayah in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet oh, Sallam, that, you know, are you going to make some... Are you going to make some... <laughs> it is a gentleman. This is, this is actually very funny, right? Uh, these people, as Muhammad Hijab, he keeps saying Islamically, 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 Islamically. I don't know what he's trying to say. Islamically, according to which source? Quran? Where? He says, you can lie. You can lie. It's, 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 it's okay to lie. What? Islamically, it's okay to lie. <laughs> These guys are comedians. Uh, I think he, the other guy, what is it? What is it? The Abdullah or something. <laughs> I think those days in the UK, you know these guys. It's amazing. These these people are comedians in Islam. Wallahi lazim. No, I don't call them Muslims. They are Mushriks, actually. People like Muhammad Hijab, this guy, the other guy. I forgot his name. Uh, somebody knows his name. You can write me. Uh, I, I, I watched this video. I was laughing so hard. I was like, oh, my God. So it's Islamically, you can lie. You can lie. <laughs> No proof. Quran chapter 7 verse 33. God say, what the kulu alallahi ma'ala ta'ala moon. It is haram to lie, to say things about God you do not know. It is haram. And these are the people who keep lying. And you'll be surprised when God is dealing with them. You are surprised. You're thinking, oh, why did he die such a death? Somebody lying like this. I'll catch him. You, inshallah, when I come to speak as Kona one day, I will get this guy. <laughs> Allah, I got it. You see what I will do to him. <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah, Robson, you save the video. Use that for the, you know, that they say you can lie in some cases. They are saying you can lie. It's, it's okay to lie. Uh, Gulpe. Gulpe say, is there any verse in Quran that says those will enter hellfire, their face will be black? Uh, I think you didn't say it where the face will be blackened, blackened. So I guess I dealt with that verse. It's in Quran chapter 40, verse, uh, is it Quran chapter 40, verse 45, right? Uh, is it 40? Let me, let me see if I got the verse right. Oh, I read a verse. Uh, I, re I read a verse earlier, right? I spoke about that, 
right? Uh, but I think Yeah, the word his face remains blacked. Here, his face remained blacked. And this blacked, let's see where it's used again. That is in Quran chapter 39, verse 60. Right? In Quran chapter 39, verse 60, it used the bus, bus wadata. That's bus wadatu. So he says, and the day on the day of resurrection, you will see those who lied about God with their faces blackened. So it's not saying just black. The word muswadatun is different from saying aswad or sauda or sawad. Uh -huh. So this is blackened. It will be, be darkened beyond this. You know how a ch charcoal. Uh, let, oh, sorry, I didn't put the verse on the screen. Let me put it. That is Quran chapter. Chapter 39, verse 60, right? And it says, on the day of resurrection, you will see those who lied about God with their faces blackened. Then it says, is there no abode in hell for the arrogant ones? So the word blackened here, you can see it. Yeah. This one. That's a boost water too. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, brother. Uh, user user seven two nine one. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Aha, uh -huh, so uh, Gulpe, Gulpe, that is your answer to your question. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, I put this one down. Put this one back and let me check what I've missed here. Uh, Ayamga says, Will you upload this live on YouTube? Yes, I will do, inshallah. Right? Uh -huh. So it could be on, on YouTube uh, tomorrow, God willing. I'll put it tomorrow. Yeah. Right? After, after this, I have to re examine, I have to watch the video and see uh, what, what needs to be there or not be there. Then I'll take it out. Arrange it and put it on YouTube, inshallah. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, anyways, uh, let me see. I think I have another video, right? Where, where's the other video? Uh, let me see if I can play the other video. Uh, so enough with woman hijabs comedy. Uh, the next one is. This is part of the dhikr that Allah will protect till the end of time. So I do not accept at all anyone to come and claim or accuse the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ simply because he feels like listening to music and contemporary songs. Hadith is something that Allah has preserved along with the Quran. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr. This is part of the dhikr that Allah will protect till the end of time. So I do not accept at all anyone to come and claim or accuse the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ simply because he feels like listening to music and contemporary songs. Amen. <laughs> did you hear Asim al-Hakim 
that's from Saudi Arabia. They are comedians. These people are comedians. It's the same guy who said, I, I, I drink beer. <laughs> you say he drinks beer. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. To them, Hadith is the main book, right? Not the Quran. Hadith. Hadith is the main book, right? Uh huh. And these people are being paid to do what they are doing. They are paid to, to mislead people. Because the masses don't use their rationality. They only want to follow somebody who looks like, you know, an Arab with, you know, he's an Arab anyway from Saudi Arabia, who is dressed like a big sheikh. He claims he's not a sheikh, but I don't know why he's giving fatwa on topics like this. And people take such people seriously. Like, hello? <laughs> you take such a person seriously? Puppets? Comedians? Well, that's what we have, right? Uh, Dambo Samadu, Salam, yeah. Robson says, what do you think about doing the traditional prayer but just filtering all the shirk out? So then we don't call it traditional prayer. If you say traditional prayer and filtering all the shirk, still, that what you have to do is do, do what you find in the Quran. Not We don't call that traditional. And that is why some Quran alone uh, followers are having this misconception about the people who follow the Quran and they perform Salat. These people misunderstand. They think we the ones who follow the Quran and we establish the Salat for God, for the remembrance of God. They think we are following the sectarians or the tribe. No. There's a big difference. It's still the same. Right? Uh -huh. It's never the same. Yeah? So... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can tolerate some few questions before I go. Uh, let me see if, if the sectarians, some of them are here. I don't see the sectarians around. They can send me a request if they are here. If you are a Sunni, uh, a Tijaniya, uh, uh, Ahmadiyya, please, please, send, you, send me an invite. I will bring you on, right? Send a request, let me bring you on. Let's have fun. I have like uh, less than, I have like 20 minutes to go, less than 20 minutes to go. So this video will be on YouTube. I'll put it on YouTube uh, later on, to maybe tomorrow. Uh, then we see. So for people who couldn't watch from the start, what you have missed, I will make sure I play, uh, get it back on YouTube so you can watch, right? I don't see any of the sectarians here. <clears throat> the names I see, let me see. I see. I see. Uh, BJ, BJ, Dumbo Samadu, uh, Ramzi, uh, user 791, the last number 791. I see you, Garba, Garba Habiba, the great, the Balo world. The user last number seven two nine one, uh, Munaver, just pure Baba Do I see you all? That's the ones I see. I don't see the uh, the sectarians around, right? Or they thought they thought uh, correctional officer is no more on on uh, <laughs> on TikTok. Well, I, I didn't for two weeks. I wasn't on here, so maybe people think I don't do videos anymore. But I know. We shared it enough, so I, I have the notification that it has been shared for people too. Let me see here. I, you know, TikTok doesn't allow me to put a phone, my phone number on this page for people to call. It's against their rules, right, for me to put my number on the page for people to call. So that is why I'm careful with that. I, I don't want to put my number to cause any problem here. So unless people type the questions or they send me uh, a request then i can bring them on as a guest but other than that i can't put my phone number to, for you to call on whatsapp right no it's not allowed uh so if you have my number you can call the question officer's number you can call i want to say a question if you don't have type your question i'll send you yeah, thank you very much Baba uh other than that let me see What's next? What's this? Uh, show what? 
Yeah, somebody was asking me a question on WhatsApp. Hey, salam, brother. What invalidates ablution according to Quran? Also, how is salat to be performed when we are three or more people? Like a small family, for example. Right? Uh -huh. So this person, I don't know if he knows I'm on live TikTok. I don't know if he's watching right now. Right? It says, what invalidates ablution according to the Quran? It's clearly mentioned in Quran chapter 5 verse 6. And Quran chapter 4 verse 43. Right? You get the answer there. That's, those are the things that invalidates your your evolution and also how is salat to be performed when we are three or more people is to be performed in a group in such that there's a leader there's an imam who is leading the congregation or the group of people right uh, because the the leader has to be in front just like in every logical sense where the leader is in front of the group right where the other group can stand behind and then take the uh, steps as the leader is leading like a small family for example yes so two three people yes that's how you do but i don't know if you are watching if you are watching that's your answer if you are not watching i will answer you later because your message comes came in whilst i was doing my listing here right uh -huh. so yeah ladies and gentlemen i think this this should be enough since uh we don't have much people we only have about uh 20 people watching at this moment so i guess i can maybe bring the topic to an end if there's no more question to ask i think i've spoken about intercession somebody asked concerning intercession and somebody asked about life after death uh and then what else i spoke about uh having mercy on like how if god will have mercy on us or something and then it, what what else did i speak about i don't yeah i think i spoke about belief right you can't force people to believe what you what you believe yeah so thank you all ladies and gentlemen uh this is the correctional officers dead uh i'm bringing the topic today to an end i would have loved to have sectarians on board but it seems the sectarians they are in a hiding mood <laughs> so they don't want baba shrive to to hijack them right <laughs> so they are in their covers hiding so on saturday i'll be on facebook youtube live right if you have not subscribed to my page kindly do that uh, let me see if i can put if you haven't oh sorry if you haven't subscribed yet kindly do that to my pages youtube facebook uh all the platforms you can find me uh, let me see where can i put this Yeah. yeah, if you haven't subscribed to my pages, you can subscribe on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, Pinterest, you name it, name it, all the platforms, I'm there, right, I'm there, so you can follow me, the correctional officer, you see the name, Baba Shrive, anywhere you see this logo, that is my page. That is where you can follow. And then I'll share, subsequently I'll share all my programs everywhere where you can access, you can benefit. And I'll be on TikTok again next week, Thursday, inshallah. Uh, Achisko, I see you. Salam, you're welcome. Thank you for the support. Uh, Robson says, uh, does this word in 5, 6 also consider passing wind? Ga'it, no, ga'it represents, uh, al ga'it, it represents going to the toilet. And in the toilet, we do two things there. To go and poop or to pee right so it is something actually coming out which which is a bit like like i would say a bit heavy so something like water something like food coming out of you that is toilet so got it that is guide it as excreta or excretion right from your body so that the the literal meaning got it is to, to excrete to to bring something of a solid instance out or you know a heavy instance out of you right excretion or excreta so yeah 
So thank you all, uh, Rob Seal, thank you, user, last number 7291. Baba Seal, thank you, uh, Salis Jimmy, thank you, Balo World, thank you. Thank you all who are here, those who are not here. I will be putting this video on YouTube later on, you benefit, inshallah. Thank you all for the support and time. On Saturday, you get me again on Facebook and YouTube. I will be available. Uh, you see me live, inshallah. And this video will be on uh, YouTube tomorrow. God willing, I'll try to put it so that you enjoy, inshallah, so that you see what you have missed, right? So ladies and gentlemen, this is where I'll bring the topic to an end. It's time for me to get some rest. It's late here. It's one o'clock midnight. I need to get some rest and then we keep in touch, inshallah, God willing. That is Saturday. So, salam alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Peace be upon you all. Thank you all. One love.